Hello, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com, where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely. In this lesson, I'm going to show you my top 10 easy guitar songs for beginners. I'll show you tabs or diagrams on the screen as needed. In some cases, it's not the full song, it's just kind of the main iconic riff. And in some cases, it is the chord progression that lasts throughout the entire song. And I will show you many of these songs with multiple levels of difficulty. With every song, we can always work on it in a way that is more accessible or more difficult. And as we learn more about music, we'll understand how to manipulate those things. And a lot of these songs, if you look them up elsewhere, are taught slightly differently. So I think you'll appreciate the way I'm going to teach these here. Let's dive into the top 10 easy guitar songs for beginners. These aren't in order from best to worst or easiest to hardest or anything like that. The first one on the list here is Seven Nation Army by The White Stripes. <laughs> going to show you how to work on this in five different ways. The very first way is going to be fifth string, seventh fret. This note is E, and we're going to play this riff. I'd recommend just using all your first finger. Okay, that is the riff. You can use the diagrams on the screen to learn it uh, and find out exactly what frets uh, you need to play. I'll play it with a little more feel. Notice I slid up to it just because it feels good. So sometimes the nuance of just making sure we're feeling it and it's locked in time is what makes it sound from you know a beginner playing to someone more advanced. But those are the frets to play and that's the easiest way to play it. I'm gonna show you a next level to play it where you can add a second note to each of those notes to create what's called a power chord. Okay, so now we're playing with our first finger on all those notes from before and we're adding a note that is two frets up and one string up above every single instance uh, of each note. Okay, that's not easy to do if you've never played power chords before. That can be very technically challenging, but at least the concept of what the goal is is very straightforward. So let your physical technique take its time. You need more flexibility, you need more strength, you need the conditioning, but very simple to work on. Give it some time and you'll be able to do that. The next level of power chord is actually adding yet another note with our pinky on the same fret as that third finger is another string up. And now this is just a thicker power chord. Okay, so now you can do the same thing. And anytime we're gonna do a few songs that have this same approach where you can add this, these layers of power chords. This note that we added with the pinky now is the same pitch as the first note. It's just an octave up, a higher note. Those are the same note. Okay, so here's how we do it with this. Fuller sound, right? Really nice. If you add distortion to that, you're gonna get that big rock sound. Side note here for technique, if you're doing any of these and you wanna kind of strum and not feel like you have to be so precise with what notes to hit, then touch the bottom of the sixth string. This is the thickest string. Just touch it slightly with the first finger. And now, if I play that string, I get this sound. That sound is buried by the full sound. So don't worry that it makes a little click, but. Now it can kind of strum with more energy and not worry about it doing this. Have that ringing there. Okay, so I'm muting that. Difficult technique, but just giving you a heads up that if that's ringing a bunch, you might need to touch it there. Two more ways to play this that are really fun. Very, very easy, same thing as before. With the first finger, but on the top string, if you can play this high on your guitar, 12th fret, Play the same distances, three frets up, two frets down, two frets down again, and then one fret down. You can do that with the single string on the top and then you can bar it. This is quite difficult to do technique wise, but again, very simple um, idea. So if you wanna work on barring, might as well do it with a fun recognizable song. I'm playing the top two strings on the same fret along that whole riff. OK, 
okay? So that's five different ways that you can work on Seven Nation Army by White Stripes. And this is exactly how I like to work on music. This is a little example of how I work on any song so I can really understand what's going on. Can I move it around to different places? Can I change the key? Can I do it with this technique? Can I do it with that? Can I add this note? Can I take something away? That's the level of understanding that I want with music. And that's why I teach the way I do. And it's why I usually don't teach songs and, and just say, play this to play this song. I want to teach more about it. So that's why I'm doing these in this way. But let's move on to song number two. The next song is Free Falling by Tom Petty. Let's put a capo on the third fret if you want to play in the original key that the song was recorded in. The first chord is going to be a D chord. So if you play with the capo anywhere else or not at all, you just have to move this chord shape accordingly to be in the correct spot to get, and you'll hear it when it's the right sound versus <laughs> something that's not. So you're just two frets up from whatever your end point is, whether you're using a capo or the nut over here on the edge of the guitar. So it's a D chord shape. Now this chord shape, if you're new to playing chords, if you're really new to guitar, this is physically quite hard. So be patient with it. Your fingers will get stronger and the conditioning will get there. You wanna get the top four strings ringing with those notes. This is the hardest part about this. There's a very easy way to play this and that's the hardest part. And then there's harder ways. So I'll show you three different ways to play this. The first thing we're gonna do is replace the top note, which was played with our middle finger with the note that is a fret up using our pinky. Okay, well this chord shape right here is called a D sus four chord. However, the actual chord of the song is a type of G chord, which is another way to play it. And I'll show you that next. It's the third way I'm gonna show you. But this right here is actually completely accurate. This sound is in the original recording. If you look up other tutorials, they'll probably say you wanna play this G chord. Well, this note, is actually in that G chord, okay? It creates uh, an extended sound or a suspended sound over this G chord. These are the types of chords I have in a chord chart called chords with color. This is a color note that is added to the G. You can get that chord chart for free, by the way, there's a link in the top of the description. I'll talk more about it later. So you can do this and it's very much the accurate sound. And if a bass player plays this G, then you have that even more complete full sound. So, and then we're gonna go down back to that note that we had, and then we're going to play this chord shape. This could be a little difficult physically as well. This is called an A sus4 chord, and it looks like that. So we're keeping this third finger down on this note the entire time. Okay, this can also be played with a regular A chord, which you'll often see that taught that way. But this note, once again, these extended kind of colorful extra notes, suspended notes are inside those chords because there's other layers in the recording. There's multiple guitars layered, there's synthesizer in the background of this song. So it creates this kind of more airy sound. Very nice, right? So that's the first way I would work on this. Okay, the next way you can do it is again how it's more often taught, playing a G chord there, but let's do a in-between step where you play D and then you play this G. And if you like that sound, just go with whatever sound you like better. So this is D and then top four strings, open, open, third finger, fourth finger. Okay, it's a type of G chord. But that's easier than this full one. Okay, and then go back from that chord back to D and then the A again, okay? And you can optionally choose this A instead. Let's do this full chord version that is very commonly taught. So we're gonna play a full D, a full G, and G is often played with interchangeably with this note down or this note up, the second string. So we're holding that down. We're keeping the third finger on the second string. So here it is. And then and then a complete A. Notice how these all sound correct. They all sound right. And then the first version I showed you has that kind of um, more suspended sound as I'm describing it. And this one has just kind of a bolder, more straightforward sound. Okay, so D, G, G, 
G, D, A. And any combination of those are fine. So what if you want the full G? And then you switch to this suspended thing. After that, you can do it however you want to. That sounds good to you, especially if you're a fan of this song or, you know, you know it because you've heard it a million times. You can kind of choose, you know, what you want to hear by playing that song. So that's free falling. Let's move on to the next song. Song number three is Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. <laughs> This is a tried and true beginner riff that guitarists have been learning for decades now. It's the kind of thing you'll hear people play when they're trying out guitars in Guitar Center or something like that. We're going to do three different versions of this, just like the White Stripes one, where we can add layers of power chords. The first note is going to be the note G, third fret, bottom string, and the riff is this. Okay, this is coming from the blues scale. Want to learn about scales? I have videos on all scale types on how to play them and map them out all over the guitar. I'll put a link to the blues scale lesson in the description. So we can do it with a single note like that with the first finger. Then you can add your third finger to make the power chord with two notes. Bolder sound. You can make it even more bold by adding your pinky to get those three notes. That's how that riff goes. Let's go on to the next song. Beginner guitar song number four is Wagon Wheel by Old Crow Medicine Show. This, I'm just gonna show you the exact chord progression. It's one of the most common chord progressions of all time. By the way, I have in that chord chart, I have a list of the 20 most common chord progressions. Um, that's in that chart you can get for free with the link in the description. But let's go over this. Capo second fret if you wanna play in the key that the original recording is in, otherwise play it anywhere you want with these same chord shapes. We're going to play a G chord shape with that note added in that is your third finger, which again, you can play a G this way, or you can lift that off and play a G this way. Okay, those are both accurate Gs just swapping out two of the notes that are both in the chord. You can actually choose between either of those. I tend to put both of them down for this song, okay? Next chord is D, okay? It's kind of nice if you have that down and you switch this chord, you keep that note down as kind of a physical anchor and practice this G shape and then keeping that note down and then moving to the D shape. When you move to the D shape, make sure you don't strum bottom strings, okay? You're strumming the top strings so you don't get this kind of sound. If you need help with strumming, I'll link you to my uh, top five strumming patterns lesson. You can work on specific strumming patterns, link in the description. Next chord is E minor, okay? Which is this shape, and then C major. When you go to C major, try to touch the bottom of the sixth string just slightly to mute it like we talked about earlier. So you can really strum that if you need to. So G, D, E minor, C. In that strumming video, I talk about orchestrating our strumming, which is a, a concept and a technique that will make your playing sound instantly more advanced, more subtle, more musical. And that's that we don't just strum every string. Equally, you wanna play, sometimes hit the bottom, bottom string, top. Bottom, top. So just a little side tip there for getting your strumming to sound more dynamic, more interesting. So that is Wagon Wheel by Old Crow Medicine Show. Beginner guitar song number five is Wild Thing or Louie Louie. We get a double here because it's the same progression. And lots of songs have the same progression, but this, these are just so recognizably the same thing. Um, and they're in the same key too. So if we play fifth fret bottom string, this is an A note. And then we go up to the same fret, but the next string up. Dun, dun, 
And then we go up two frets with the single note is level one for both of these. Then you can add the two power chord approaches where you add that extra note for the power chord. Okay, you can add the third power chord note. Again, when you switch now to this other string set, you need to touch the bottom of the sixth string. So you don't get that sound, so it mutes that. So, wow, thing. You make my heart sing. Or Louie Louie. Oh, we gotta go. They're slightly different tempos. I think I did it the wrong way. Louie Louie, I think, is faster. Regardless, you have it in your head. You're, you've heard probably both of those a million times in different places, and you can do a mashup of them if you want to by playing that same progression. So that's three different levels. And then let's do a fourth level for this one where we play the full versions of these chords where we go A, then D, then E. All four of those ways are ways that you can play the, both of these songs or any song with this progression, and they get pro progressively harder. These full chord shapes are harder, but if you need to work on them, it's nice to do it with recognizable riffs, which is what this lesson is about. Let's move on to the next song. Beginner guitar song number six is Sunshine of My Love by Eric Clapton. This is going to be within a blues scale physical form. I call them forms, but shapes or patterns are often um, used as well interchangeably for a position on the guitar where you can play a scale shape. Again, I have scale sh videos for every scale type, and this is one of the shapes. That is the blues scale. This is common for people improvising, noodling, riffing, uh, playing the blues. Some players have their whole career just only playing that physical scale shape because it sounds so good and you can get really creative with it. So this song, I'll show you two different variations. Here's the first one. Okay, the hardest part about this is if you want to get that, that little bit, that little attitude bend on the second to last note. Just after you play the note, pull it a little and then go back and you can just use your ear to taste to find that. To add a variation on this in the recording, you'll hear this. So we can do a version like that instead. Okay, once again, that second to last note, adding a little vibrato where you pull down on the string for that attitude is really helpful for it to sound like it has more personality. Um, you don't have to do that, but you'll hear the difference. Instead of Okay, so. You can go between those two versions if you want. It's basically what the recording does. It starts with the first one and then adds in that top thing later. So that's Sunshine of My Love by Eric Clapton. Let's move on to the next song. Beginner guitar song number seven is a classical melody that I wanted to throw in here. This is one of the most recognizable melodies of all time. Really great to practice on the guitar. We're just gonna do the most simplified version of it. This is Beethoven's theme from his ninth symphony, the Ode to Joy melody. It's in the key of D. I'm gonna show you the D major scale here, just the notes that we need to know. And then these notes below, the root. That's how I like to play scales, start on the root, land on the root, and play the notes around it. You can hear it sounds like a major scale. And now I'll just play you the theme with the tabs on the screen so you can learn this if you want. This is very great for technique, for just practicing nice, clean, single notes, something that's lovely to listen to over and over again as we practice it.
not much more to say about that. Just use the video, slow it down on YouTube if you need to. You can use the tabs on the screen uh, to play that. If you love that melody, I recommend working on that. Just try to get each note nice and clean until it's in time for yourself. Let's move on to the next song. Beginner guitar song number eight is Knockin' on Heaven's Door by Bob Dylan. <laughs> is going to be a G chord, which we've been using, the same G chord shape that I like to play with the extra note in there that I talked about before. And then D, we've done this now in two different songs, this G to D, and then the third chord is A minor. Okay, and then that happens again, except A minor is replaced by C. So the second time it's this. And then it just goes back and forth between those two. So G, D, A minor. And then back to G, D, and then C. Feels so good, this song. playing in a way that I call orchestrating the chords. Two things, I play the bottom and then the top at different times to emphasize it, and I play with dynamics where sometimes I play a harder strum and sometimes a softer strum. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do that, you just wanna play with that until it feels right to you, so it actually is emotionally expressive that you dig in a little sometimes, you play softer sometimes. I'll refer to you to one of my videos called top, I think it's top five chord mistakes or something like that, where I show what not to do and how to do it better. I'll put a link in the description to that video. Um, it's quite helpful for this strumming stuff that I'm talking about. Beginner guitar song number nine is Wonderwall by Oasis. <laughs> wanted to include this on the list. It's a great beginner song, but it is the hardest one on the entire list, and I'll explain why as I show it to you. It's also a song that is taught widely, but usually isn't taught exactly how they play it on the recording. Like I said, you can do variations of any song, and the variations are what are widely taught all over the place. On the recording, they're playing unconventional uh, chord shapes that have a certain ring and a different sound to them. And it's kind of hard to decipher what those chords are. So people often play them with just basic chords, which you're welcome to do, but I'll show you exactly how they're playing it on the recording. The reason this is different is that we're holding strings one and two with fingers four and three, just like we do with this G chord I've been showing you. These are gonna stay there the entire time. And by the way, capo second fret, if you wanna play in the key that the original song was recorded in. So the first chord is E minor with these two notes on there. This is physically very hard. If you don't have a lot of technique, that's gonna seem really hard. But if you can get this physically down, holding that there while playing a few chords, um, it's otherwise very easy to just play this, this uh, chord progression over and over and over. So it's E minor with these two up there. It makes it what's called an E minor seven chord. Then we switch to a G chord. So if you're playing this E minor seven like this, you just take this middle finger and you move it over here and let this finger shift over, okay? Because you want your fingers to be as close to the uh, frets, the metal part as possible. More on that next week with my next video that has beginner tips. Okay, E minor seven to G, and then it would it's going to what would be a D chord, but we're still keeping these up here. So we have a D sus four chord, which we played with the free falling. Okay, so this is new, but this chord shape we've played and this chord shape we've played. And then we're switching to an A sus. It's actually A, yeah, it's, it's ambiguous. It's like an A sus four with a fl uh, flat seven as well. That's theory stuff, don't worry about that. So it's kind of A dominant seven sus four is what we could think of as this, but it doesn't really sound like that functionally. It's just this kind of airy open a type chord. So it's like you're playing A, but we're forced to keep these two uh, fingers up there the whole time. So here's the sound. This 
have that ringing on top is just always there. It really gives it this character, this kind of emo 90s alternative rock sound that Oasis is, that 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 the song Wonderful Wonderwall is. To me, it needs to be there to hit this song, you know, in the center and, and really feel like the song, as opposed to if you play E, G, D, A. Notice that that, that doesn't feel right. So one side note about the orchestration of the strumming is that really with the with the D version of the chord, you just really have to make sure you don't hit the bottom strings. You just strum up on those top strings. Don't worry about hitting all four of them. Just aim for the top three strings or so, and you'll be you'll be fine. So that is Wonderwall by Oasis. Beginner guitar song number ten is Stand by Me. in the key of G and all of these we notice almost all of these are in this key where this is like one of the main chords whether we're using a capo or not that's because this key key of G is the most beginner friendly most user friendly kind of technique friendly key where a lot of the chords are open string chords and we don't hit as many um, technique challenges so that's why this key is very useful and if you use a capo you can just play any song using those same chords which is what people do which is why that's so common so here is the the chord G and I'm going to recommend that we do this technique where you strum and then mute it, hit with your hand. Okay, so you let go a little here and you hit it with your hand. That could take some work to get used to. And then go to E minor. And then C. And then D. And then G. And actually for this G, I recommend taking this third finger off, which I didn't do there, but it sounds better, I think, for this song. Okay, that's Stand By Me. Now, if you're really a beginner beginner, that is not easy. Getting these chords to switch, getting it to all sync up and be coordinated, just even getting all the notes to ring it's really not supposed to be easy so don't be don't beat yourself up if just switching a couple chords is hard that's just something we've all had to grapple with but as you do work towards chord switching and strumming which is going to unlock how to play practically any song those basic skills you might as well work towards a collection of songs like these that is fun recognizable other people that you're playing around will know what you're playing or you can sing along if you like to sing so be patient if that's hard for you if you do have some chords down and you just wanted some recognizable songs that's also perfect for why we're doing this lesson right now any chord progression can be used for unlimited amounts of songs so many songs are using the exact same chord progression many of these chord progressions here are thousands of other recognizable songs as well. So if you want a resource that has a list of the top 20 most common chord progressions with a full chord chart of multiple options of chord shapes that you can play, including everything we played here and way, way more, grab my free chord chart called Chords with Color, which shows all the chords through five different keys in their normal way that they're played, plus a bunch of colorful, beautiful alternatives for those chords. All of them are the easiest possible form of those chords using open strings, not barring when possible. And then kind of a bonus list at the end of the chord chart is the top 20 most common chord progressions of all time, where if you learn those and practice those in any key or in a variety of key, you're playing millions of songs at once and as you learn more songs in the future you get to just say oh that's that progression oh that's that progression i've played that or write your own songs very very useful chord chart people email me all the time saying that it's an amazing resource for them so grab that if you want to there's a link in the top of the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color that chord chart is totally free and if you get it i'll also send you a video that breaks down all the ways you can use it if you want something to watch next check out my common chord progressions video series where i go through those same 20 common chord progressions in a mini series of four lessons i'll put a link to the playlist of that series on the screen here if 
if you're watching on YouTube. I post a new lesson video every single week. Next week, I'm going to do my top 10 beginner guitar tips. These are kind of unconventional guitar tips. So I hope to see you in that lesson next week. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe, please hit like, please hit the bell for notifications and continue to follow along. I'm in this for the long game and very excited to be teaching and helping you out. And I do hope that you find these helpful. See you in another video soon. Take care and happy practicing.